Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Guys, Fossey V3 Mono. I'm testing that now, okay? But I, I just finished testing the IMA A70. This guy here, this little amp. This guy, pretty cool amp. It came with a GAN power supply using GAN transistors instead of MOSFETs. All right, so this is it. This little guy right here, all right? So the one that came, the, the normal 48 volt 5 amp is this one, okay? So someone in uh, my last video commented about this and they said that they had trouble getting more than 3.6 amps or something out of it, I think. So I'm gonna do a quick test and see how many amps we can get out of this. Also, let's look at the noise coming out of it. Okay, it does have this little ferrite bead in the cord. So that's a cool feature as well. So let's come over here, test this thing. All right, guys, so this is that GAN 48 volt, five amp. It's the GAN power adapter. And it's just a little small thing. You can see how small it is, right? So uh, there's some questions about, can I handle the five amps? And so see the green lights on? Now, I think it's around 38 degrees here, but you know what? It's been running for about a half an hour. And what I have is output over here going to, I have this little breakout cable here. I'm going to power supply lead. I've got an oscilloscope here and I've got the meter. So i got, you know, right here, there's gonna be some drop across the cable. That's one thing, you know, cable could be a little bit bigger so it doesn't have as much drop. It feels nice and cool, but anyway, um, so there we go, we have 47.43 volts there, okay? Now, if we follow the leads here up to the load, we see this, and there we go, 47.2. So there's some voltage drop across, across these leads. Could double them up, but you know, don't need to be too precise, but five amps. You can see it's been running for 23 minutes. So yeah, it's... Uh, it's been fine. Now let's look at the temperatures again. Okay, got this thermal camera and you can see like down inside, it's saying about 49 degrees, I can see a hot spot. Just looking through the plastic. Okay, so if I flip it over, I mean, when I fill it, I could hold it for a long time. I mean, it's not hot at all. It's not you know, that temperature around 60 C where you can't hold it very long. So I see some temperatures around 49, maybe 51.8. So maybe it's because that was on the bottom and it was running hotter because of that. So yeah, so there you go, guys. It's, uh, yeah, I guess it is. It does feel warmer on this end, but you know, it's fairly even, but there is some temperature. And when I hold a temperature probe on the plastic part here, hold on a sec, this meter here, it's shooting up, but it's, it's gonna start leveling off, I think. So I think we're seeing a little hotter temperatures because we're probably looking through the plastic. But 41.9, 42. So yeah, and yeah, so that's steady state power, guys. And there we go. And you know what? Should we short circuit test it? I've done that once before. Actually, you know what? Watch this. I go six amps, but the problem is uh, this guy will beep and turn off. So uh, if I go up another, yeah, see, I'm at 260. Now, guys, this is incredible. I'm putting 120 volts in. I got 258, 259 watts. Look at this, power factor is like one. Isn't that crazy? We got peak currents of 3.2 amps. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, that is crazy. 60 Hertz, we're here in the US. So yeah, this guy actually trips when I take this up too high. But you know what? Maybe I can inch it up and see we can get five, okay, we're 
Okay, so 5.6 amps, no problem. And it's 290. So we're getting close to where that guy's going to trip. 5.7. Wow, 295. So there you go, guys. Uh, that little power supply is very capable. That is, that's pretty impressive, right? All right, so here's the GAN still running. And here is the non-GAN. So that's the size difference, okay? They're almost the same height, but guys wider. He's, oops, trying to get that corner to match up over here. So yeah, you can see it's that much wider, that much longer. And I think it might be just a skosh taller, but not very much. Eighth of an inch, you know, something like that. By the way, we're still running at 5.7 amps, so I left it there. That's pretty, that's pretty great, guys. So yeah, five amps, no worries. And you know, by the way, it drops down to 47 volts here at 5.7, but over here we're 47.3, so we're 0.3 higher. And okay, guys, the little jumper that I have in here is about six inches long, eight inches long maybe, okay? So it's connected there, comes around here to the alligator clips. So 47.3, up here we're 47. 5.7, so it's looking pretty good. Hey, is it good clean power? I'm glad you asked. So I've got this Unity. This is a nice, very nice scope. It's a loner. It's MSO 3054 HD. Ah, big screen, love that thing. Okay, look how, look how flat that waveform is. Okay, now this is 100 microseconds in this division. So here, let's... Zoom in a little bit more, see if we see anything. 500 nanoseconds. We can zoom in, oh, just to the limit. So 500 picoseconds. There's not even any high frequency peaky noise. Now, now I do have the scope bandwidth limit to 20 meg. That is uh, common when you're doing power splice, but here I'll just go to full just for the heck of it. Uh, the problem is, is you pick up a lot of noise because the high bandwidth, um, usually you should have that little spring clip where you're right at the terminals. So the 20 meg is just a common way to read it. But anyway, let's just leave it there for now. So, okay, if I go to low frequency, 50 milliseconds, you don't even see any low frequency ripple. It's just, it's just a very stiff power supply. We love that. Okay, now let's AC couple this thing so we can look at the ripple. So let's go over AC. Okay, now I see, I thought I saw some movement, right? Okay, here, let's uh, get the vertical adjustment up here in the center of the screen. Okay, we're five milliseconds still. Let's zoom in to switching frequency type stuff. Oh, you know what else? 30, let's zoom in on the, okay, I had that in uh, fine tune too. Okay, there we go. Okay, now that's 600 millivolts, this 200 millivolts. Let's zoom in, see if we can see any sensical type measurements here. Okay, uh, I'll bring the, bring the trigger up here so I can just trigger on the highest peak possible. Oh, you can see little peaks there. Okay, there we go. Bring it down a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, we're locked in. Okay, now look at that, That that's a, that could be a switching spike where the transistor is turning on or off. And these are just, uh, you know, it could either be noise or it could be some resonance with the, you know, the parasitics and so on. Here, let's come out and see if we can see the next spike so we can see the ripple. Okay, here's some other higher spikes. For some reason, let me see. Okay, so this one's up that high, okay? So I was thinking these, some of these look higher, but they're not. It's just that I've got that one locked. These are bouncing around, so they show off more. But you can see the peak. When I'm moving, you can see the trigger where it's set. But anyway, if I do this, 
And here, let's freeze that. And there we go. We can look at the, here, I haven't done this before. Let's turn on the cursors. And uh, yeah, we want time. Man, this is so nice. I'm just learning as I go. Very intuitive, very simple. Over here, we got some uh, frequency, right? There's 29.3 meg. And here's some time, 34 microseconds. So, okay, so let me just bring this in over on one cycle. And 171 kilohertz. That sounds like a switching frequency to me. That's pretty cool. Now, this power supply, that, uh, because power factor is close to one, means that has a power factor correction circuit, so that's very efficient, and the converter is very efficient. But guys, I'm not using the 20 meg bandwidth limit. If you guys have measured power supply noise, I think you'll attest to that is very low. Now the noise part's up to 200 millivolts, but the actual ripple is, is this low frequency ripple. That's charging, discharging capacitors. This is switching frequency noise. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit more on that. Okay, so if we're just looking at that stuff, now we'll spread that out. Okay, so see, there's the ripple, the low frequency ripple, the power, power supply, charging, discharging capacitors, that kind of thing. So it's one frame down, minus 20, two frames up to plus 40. So we got about 60 volts, peak to 60 millivolts, peak to peak ripple. Pretty darn good. Now this scope, man, it's incredible. It's awesome. Loving it. Okay. Now lock it in again. See, it's just noisy as heck with until you stop the scope. I'm just stopping and starting over here. Okay, now here's what I want to do. I want to go back down to the 20 meg, the normal way, because I know you guys that have done this know that that's the right way to do it. But let's just see what it looks like when I do that. Let me lower it so we can get all of it in. Okay. Now, if I bring the trigger down, see the trigger is way up here. That's why it's just random. So if I come down and actually trigger, it's cleaner, right? Okay, now if I freeze it, then we got a nice clean waveform. And now if I zoom in on that, we can actually see that. Yeah, so this would be this would be a resonance in the switching of the fat, you know, the parasitics. Uh, so hard to know when you're looking at that. All right, guys, sorry, my battery died. Um, this thing's gotten warm. I've left it at 5.7 amps. What do we see? 57C. So 57C and everything's been fine. I still got my measurement there. There we go. And we're 295 watts, guys. So I'm impressed. All right, guys, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, it handles five amps easily, you know, the limiting factor was my AC. I could have plugged this into the wall, but I wanted the protection and I also want a nice clean power from this AC power source. Uh, so yeah, that's from IT. That's a 7321. It's good for 300 VA. It'd be cool if it was good for 500 VA or thousand or something. But anyway, 300 VA, that covers a lot of things. And man, the power factor, amazing that it actually says one. It's like, that's crazy. So, yeah, they've done a really not. Ah, it's still warm. Still warm. It never got too hot to hold. And, I, you know, I was running at 5.7 amps. So that's, you know, that was nice, right? And, you know, almost 300 watts. And this guy, he says, what is he? He says he's ready for 240 watts. So, man, they... You know, you always want to build in usually minimum 20% headroom in a, in a power supply. But, uh, you know, 20% is a good margin. If you over design too much, you just, why not just spec it higher? And why not just spec it higher and let the marketing guys uh, do their magic and make more money on it? <laughs> so, you know, 20% decent margin. What do you guys think? Uh, but, the noise on this look very good, right? Now it's going into class D amp, which which once it goes to the class D amp, uh, the class D amp is going to have its own switching noise. But this is what was 170 kilohertz, I think it was. So 
you know, it's a little bit lower than the class D amp is going to be having. And you know what? Come to think of it, I think I did see uh, a noise spike in the FFT in my last videos, right? It seems like I did see something around 170K. So, and uh, I believe I even guessed that it was from the power spike. So, I think I think we know now that's where it's coming from. But relatively, so it was relatively clean though, right? So there you go, guys. Just quick video. Wanted to show you that. How'd you like it? Like the video. That helps the channel a lot. Free ways to support the channel. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. Really appreciate that. I'm trying to trying to grow the channel. So yeah, these days. Anyway, so yeah, if you could appreciate that and. Thanks for the viewer who the you know made the comment about this power supply because it was something kind of in the back of my head thinking I wanted to compare these, but it just kind of pushed it forward and just wanted to get it out of the way before I go too far with all this audio amp testing, right? So thank you. All right, guys, two big thumbs up to my patrons and my YouTube members and Danny, as always, for being a team member. That's awesome. You can uh, join Patreon or, you know, YouTube become a youtube member if you want that's down below too liking the channel subscribing free ways to support that's awesome as well so i appreciate it guys thanks for watching see you next time